Hi. This week I want to talk about something that if you're a fan of these videos you might find helpful and that is uh, some thoughts about how we go about persuading people. So I got to share a bit of stories about myself and my own transition in understanding uh, how we persuade folks because um, I would not have considered myself a theology nerd uh, until relatively recently in my life. I mean, over half of my lifetime was spent not reading the Bible at all. I only started reading the Bible with any seriousness of any kind uh, when I was in college. And it was, and at the time, you know, I, I really wasn't interested in doing a whole lot of what we call theology. I was mostly just interested in reading the Bible and trying to do the best I can at the Christian life. Now, in seminary, I got really interested and involved in uh, several facets of the academic training uh, there. And so, like, for Bible and also for history and also for theology. But the one I really drove myself into uh, was theology. And it was really only in about the last year of seminary, and as I was going off to serve full-time as a pastor, that I began to realize that I was, by any reasonable standard, uh, a theology nerd. That I was interested in it, I wanted to talk about it, I wanted to engage with it, and I wanted to discuss it with other people. So it was a bit of a surprise to realize uh, all of a sudden one day that the people who I talked to who annoyed me some of the most were other people who would call themselves to be theology nerds. And I started to think about why that might be. It seemed to me that at least many of the folks who I knew who, were, who would call themselves theology nerds uh, seemed to me to be more interested in being right than actually helping people to live faithful lives. Uh, it seemed to me that several folks who I knew you know, that they were very interested in making sure they had the proof text to back up every theological claim that they had. And what I noticed is whether this was intended or not, um, I found that I got the impression that uh, they made a quiet assumption that what they believed and what the Bible said were really one and the same. And so what that at least communicated to me was that if I disagreed with them on a point, I was going to be interpreted, at least by them, as not really disagreeing with them, but simply disagreeing with the Bible, and that takes the conversation to a whole new level. Well, my experience is that conversations among those kinds of theology nerds uh, tends to very quickly devolve into a, a kind of a full-blown argument, uh, and both people dig their heels in, and neither side really wants to let go and let the other person go about their business and leave until they can admit defeat. And, and I have to say, I used to be like that a lot. I used to, if I was going to talk to you about something, I wanted you to sit with me, and I didn't want you to leave until you got to the point where you would say, could say essentially to me, Travis, I admit it. I was wrong, you were right, and then I could walk away feeling very confident in myself and feeling very glad that I've done some good in the world. Well, since those days, I've had a bit of time to reflect a bit about uh, how it is that people get convinced of things, and I've had a lot of time to reflect on how it is that I've come to change my mind or be convinced of something when that happens. And what I started to realize was I basically never change my mind in the middle of an argument. If I'm having an argument with you, um, I'm, I'm, it's kind of like a battle. I got my heels dug in. I am going full force. I'm not really interested even in the moment. I feel like uh, even admitting, giving you a small point, a small concession, oh yeah, that seems reasonable, because I worry that in the moment where we're all kind of high um, you know, adrenaline and all the rest, that what's going to happen is you're going to take that little thing that I admit you're going to unravel it into a direction that makes me say, oh no, I was wrong to even give up on that small point. So like emotions are high, uh, there's usually some kind of intensity, there's feelings involved, and I realize that when I'm in the midst of that, I don't ever change my mind, at least in the moment. And I started to realize that on the things where I do do change my mind, when I am convinced of an argument, it's always later on, in the calm of reflection, when I start to think about things in a new way. I get to come back to a topic again, and, and a situation where I'm not trying to prepare for or be engaged in a fight over the issue, and all of a sudden I've had times where I've realized, huh, that point makes more sense. And a lot of times, even before I realize that I've changed my mind on it, I start hearing myself giving voice to arguments that I've heard other people make before that I didn't like when I heard them. It's something about the, the slow working in my heart uh, of, the, of the things that I've heard and the positions that I've been exposed to uh, that begin to slowly and subtly change my mind until the point is when I finally come out and, and, and articulate them myself. So what that means for me personally is I have tried to adopt a much more modest set of expectations when I am engaged in discussion or debate uh, about theological topics, uh, and, and really, or really about anything for that matter, uh, where the idea is um, if we come, I, I don't really expect you to be convinced in the midst of the discussion. In fact, uh, I would be really surprised if we had a discussion and you walked away saying, Travis, I think you're right. Um, what I really want to do now is I want to have a situation where I can just make my case. I can just uh, you know, state my piece and all the rest. And 
in doing so, I will probably uh, make some light comments. I will probably make some jokes about myself and at my own expense. I'll probably acknowledge things like, well, you know, this is what I think, but I'm kind of crazy, you know. I'm kind of on the extreme. I don't know uh, if, if most normal people would agree with this. And I'll make those kinds of comments, and I'll make light of it because I don't want to overwhelm somebody. You know, yes, these may be my convictions, uh, but at the same time, I realize that to try to convince somebody in the moment is, is seen as an attack. And uh, to try to diffuse that attacking sensation as much as possible, I have found to be very helpful. In any case, after I've made my, my presentation, after I've kind of gone off and said, this is what I think, these are all the angles I want to look at it, this is how I came to come to the position that I've come to, uh, even if you think it's a little bit extreme or you think it's a little bit out there or you think it doesn't have a basis, my goal is to just simply let it go. And then either I will leave it alone and, and not talk about it again with you, or else I'll rehash the arguments with you if you want to be reminded of something, uh, but at your preference. And my preference at that point is simply to let it go and to let it percolate in you as new ideas often take time to percolate with me. Now, I want to give you an example of what this is. Um, uh, people who have spent time with me over the last several years will know exactly what I'm talking about, but I'm not trying to start a fight right now. And so, but the fact of the matter is, um, I became a little bit well known among uh, my friends and acquaintances for having a big problem with a particular song that was often sung in large group worship settings. Um, I didn't care for it. I didn't. Um, I thought that the language being used was uh, overly uh, emotionally manipulative. Uh, I thought that it tended to reduce the gravity of what we were talking about. And uh, But the biggest problem seemed to me, not only it had its flaws, and so many songs have flaws, but the fact that it really occupied a very central place in the Christian songbook of the circles that I was in. And I have found myself having to make arguments against it much less frequently than I used to, uh, in part because it seems as though uh, that song has kind of shifted away from being the center of our community songbook. And I have been glad about that. But what was interesting about it was, Several years ago, especially, uh, it was really extremely popular. And so what I would what I would come out at almost any kind of gathering I was at, at some kind of retreat or some kind of camp that I was helping out with, uh, the thing would come out and say, you know, did you know that Travis doesn't care for this song? And I would get these looks from people like, you're crazy. I had one person who, in some degree of, of joking, uh, said, how can you even be a Christian if you don't like that song? Well, in any case, uh, what I would found happen on more than one occasion is I would simply lay out my case. This is what I think. This is why I think that way. I would make, uh, I would, I would uh, uh, pull back arguments uh, when I realized that I was perhaps overstating them in the past, and I would just kind of say, "These are my concerns. This is where it is." And almost always, those conversations ended the same way. Well, Travis, that's very interesting. I think you're crazy. I disagree with you, but whatever, you can believe what you want. And then we'd part ways. And what happened is, I would run into them again. I'd run into individuals three, six, nine, 12 months later, and they would come up to me and say, and I wouldn't even bring it up again, I'd just let it go. And they'd come up to me and say, you know what, Travis? I've given that a lot of thought. I think you're right. And I just kind of let it at that. You know, there's no, you can't, you can't have an I told you so in there either. But I thought it was really interesting that simply making a case and simply letting the argument do whatever it is to be done is probably the best way to go about persuading people without having to like stick your foot on the ground and say, you must agree with me or else, or, or put our friendship on the line or something like that. Uh, because I have found that the best way to convince me of something is to make a really good argument and then just let it sit with me. And if it's really good argument, I'm going to listen to it. I'm going to weigh it. I'm going to at least, it might mod, may not agree with you 100%, but it might modify the way I used to talk about things as well. So my encouragement to you is if you are ever in a situation where you are having an argument or a disagreement and you want to persuade the person, um, you know, the fact of the matter is you can't actually change their mind for them. And they can't simply make a decision to believe X rather than Y. At some point, there has to be a conviction that grips them. And so my encouragement is, in the midst of the things that can sometimes get to be feisty, I mean, there's been lots of, of ink and even blood spilled in the name of theological um, arguments. But I would encourage you to simply make a case. Think your things through as well as you can. Uh, think, from as, I mean, think it through from as many different angles as you can and make your case as simply and as clearly as you can and as comprehensively as you can and then let it go. Some people are going to come to believe you. Some people are going to come to agree with you. Some people are not. And you can't really make it to happen one way or the other. So just leave it in the hands of God and that person and know that you have borne witness to what you believe to be the truth. And you can always, in the midst of it all, pray that if it's good and if it's solid, if it's foundational, that God will make it bear fruit. And if it's if it's off, if it's mistaken, if it's got other kind of problems with it, that God would simply make it go away. 
Well, that's all for this week. If you have any questions you'd like me to take up, any topics you'd like me to discuss, uh, please send me an email at pastorstevick at gmail.com. Uh, please consider liking and sharing this video and other videos like it on Facebook. If you want, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash one Well, that's all I have for this week. We'll see you next time.